My auntie came along. She started learning the story, so the stories were passed on to her. And what, um, when my auntie started working at the university, she was scared that these stories are going to be lost. And because our belief is we don't print them, then she was wondering how do we get away from this. So what they did is she got a bunch of elders together on our reserve, and all of these elders are now gone. And they were fluent speakers. A lot of them didn't have an education. So what she did is she got these elders together and she pleaded with them to let her record them so we can keep these stories, so we can keep them going. So she did, they all agreed. So now we must have about 50 stories in the language at the university, all on cassette tapes. So um, my auntie retired now and so everything that she had, I have. So what I want to do is get all these stories put on, the, on CDs or something so we can keep them. But what she did is she took um, seven other stories from my area and she wrote a book. And it was the elders okayed it. If that's the only way we're going to be able to teach our kids, then we, the way they're learning now, then we might as well teach it that way. So she did a book. This is just a copy. I don't have any copies because everywhere I go, if I get a copy, I give it away. And I'm sorry I should have brought copies. But this is called Nana Bush Atso Kewinan, which are Nana Bush legends. There's seven stories from the Kansak area. I'm going to read one today. Because I wasn't given the stories, then I'm able, I'm able to teach them, but I wasn't given that right to go and tell them. And in where I come from, that's what we do. We, we don't just take things. We have to, it has to be passed on to us. But this was given to me in school because my auntie retired, I took her place, so I teach these stories in the school. And I teach them in English. And um, it kind of loses a lot of stuff in English. Because a lot of our words have no meaning in English. So it's very hard to translate and a lot of people don't realize that. Translate this for me, translate this for me. There's a lot of our words, there's a lot of English words that we don't have in Soto. And if you look at English, English is a bastardized language where it borrows from everybody. It doesn't have an origin of its own. So a lot of words are in French, so you can't translate, you know, and try to translate into, into, into uh, one of the languages. It's very hard. So I'm going to tell this story in, in the Soto language. And I got about 20 copies here, whoever wants to copy. This is called Nanapa Shabukukuku. The thing we know on Nanapush to Palm say no for me. Me away on Nisha for Nanapushka, Minwenda. We check Papa, a palm state, Papa to Quake Kenda. Gago Gema and Doneva, a wea, but no da do to what? Gema da wage mark. We walk a palm say no for me. Get <laughs> Nana and Ducky, Tutmaka Quay, Paki Paki Matuat. They take away children in a bush garden and on that in a cook or bush the garden. We engage in a book or mention in man. The shiny bush go over Quay Pinan in a cook or we engage the book. My guitar was it up in a sea. Mishwa <laughs> 
Kaya pa yung nungrong kukuku, o gas kito na wa, ute ute nang ta, isi kweni wa. Mea nish minuwa na yung kush tatu. Mea minuwa na yung kush kito ta. Mea ma e kuset. So that tells about how na yung kush, how the Ahu got its name, and what na yung kush did to it. They fought, the name that Ahu was throwing things on his head. So when he looked up, he seen him. So they ended up fighting and they fought for a long time. Finally, Nenabush wrung his neck to where he broke it. So now today the owl can swing his head around. That's why, because Nenabush did that. And our belief is that when we see an owl, we're going to hear bad news and that's the reason why. Because Nenabush fought the owl. And that's one of the stories that we tell in class. and. The language is very important. If you look at that word, minangana, nangana has no meaning alone. It needs that me beside it. So how do you teach that to kids in the school? I teach solo, I've been teaching for 14 years. We haven't made a fluent speaker yet and we never will. Because we're teaching it the way the white man teaches us English. So we need these stories to keep going, otherwise our histories are going to be lost. Our stories are told in our language. We have histories from back home about our ceremonies and how they began here. And those ones are stories that I don't, they were shared with me, but I can't go and share them. They were told to me because those are my family members that they were told to, so they shared them with the family. So some of those stories we, we can share with people. Our songs, like Joni Kalhau with his songs, us too we have songs that tell our, our songs are, are uh, with our ceremonies and only certain people again know those ones. They can't be passed on or they can't be used anywhere. Um, our beliefs, our customs, our traditions are all told in these stories. These are our teaching tools. These are how we were taught our behaviors. Um, we have stories that keep kids away from going out at night. Today they're not being told we have kids walking around all hours of the night. There's a belief we have that the spirits room at night and we're to stay in and be quiet and not bother them because they can come and bother you. That's not being told anymore. Those stories about that is not being told anymore. I remember as a kid being told these stories because we had no vehicle. You know, and if it was winter, you couldn't go anywhere. So my grandfather would start telling us stories. Once in a while, he'd throw something in there, and my grandmother would get mad at him. Don't change it, tell him the right way. But he'd do that to see if we were listening. But we hear the same story over and over. I'm just sorry that I didn't listen. You know, and I, I could have I could have learned these stories. I know them in English, but I, uh, the language the language is missing. And a lot of um, words are ineffable. They can't be translated into English. And we need them. We have uh, the dancing duck story. Now that story has a lot of teachings in it, and it's told to kids, and kids from there take stuff out of there. We have um, teachings in that story like being lazy, we're taught not to be lazy. Nana Bush is a lazy man. We're taught not to be like him. He's greedy. We're taught not to be like him. We're, he's mischievous. We're taught not to be like him. So these stories tell that. Um, we also have stories on our belief system. The word patatsui, it's very hard to translate that into English. For us, that's our belief that whatever we do to anybody, especially Mother Nature, we get paid back for it. When I was a kid, um, we used to run around, like, play outside a lot and, uh, one time there was a big wind and we were running against it, screaming. My grandmother yelled at us, told us to come inside. 
We started getting shipped. We thought, well, we're playing outside. No, you're not. You're teasing the wind. You don't do that. Uh, that's the wind, they told us. So that's going against Mother Nature, teasing her. He said, she'll come back and she'll do something to you. Don't do that. So that's one of the things that can be translated. Today they call it like karma. Onjine win again is another one that can be translated into English. That's another one. We do something bad to people and nature and animals. We get paid back. So whatever you do to others will befall you. So those, those things are taught in these stories, especially the dancing ducks. That has a lot of teachings for the kids, and nobody tells that anymore. I went in, uh, to Cody one day to tell stories. They, they invited me to a classroom. And I found them so cute. These are my people, I was thinking. One little girl had a lot of questions. She's just sitting here scared, this thing. Ooh, I'm scared of Nina, but she's scared. And I was telling the teacher, see, this is what we need. We need these to come back. And that little girl said, when I get home, I'm going to tell my mom, and I'm going to tell her we can't go outside when it's dark anymore. And, you know, so it had an impact on her. So it has to come back, even if we can start off in English and throw it in solo with it. You know, people pick up fast. And where I teach, we can teach those words like minanguna, like something like that. We can we just teach the basics, the grammar, the grammar, you know. And I go out to communities and teach, and actually they teach me. A lot of them are not are are um, non-speakers, but they remember things. As soon as you bring it out there, they remember. Like with the stories, I gave them all books to one of the. Elderly lady says, I remember these stories. I told her, you got to start telling them. You know, we have to start bringing them back because once they're gone, we lose our beliefs, we lose our histories, we lose our ceremonies. A lot of our ceremonies have a story and how, we, how they came to be. <laughs> and if once those are gone, then nobody's going to know who we are. Each of us have, a, have a, something that we were given, our language. And we weren't all given the same language like English. We were given each a special language, and which, which is only our language. And we need to bring it back. We really need to bring the language back. Um, Something else I was gonna I was gonna write stuff down and I thought I probably wouldn't even go through it. Now I can't remember what I was gonna speak about. <laughs> but language is very important. Language is our lifeblood of our culture. That's what makes us all unique, is that language. You know, we um, I always push this story, there was a language being lost in the States. Only one woman knew it. So what she did is she started telling her son words and he started collecting them. He started, she started telling him little sentences, he started collecting them. Now he's got a dictionary and he can speak. So it starts at one. <laughs> if only one can do it, then there's how much of us here right now we can, we can save our language. We can save our languages, our stories. When, um, when we talk about the earth too, like we have a different view. Anim Nishna Beka Kanawalpandana ke how the soul will see the world. Our world view is a little bit different. Each person has a little bit difference in their world view. Um, <coughs> when we talk about the earth, the way I was taught and the way I was taught how to say the earth is which is spirit land. Even though the earth acts like a mother, we don't call her mother earth. We call it spirit land because everything that was put on earth was given a spirit. Um, the creator again. When I used to hear my grandfather and uncle speak and talk about the creator, they never, they never used Chimanetu. Um, because like they say that's modern, that's just like following the church, the great spirit. 
For what I used to hear them say is Kathim and Nang. And the way it was translated to me is the one who oversees everything. Not female, not male. It's the one who oversees everything. So that's why I say the language is very important. Doesn't translate out to what English means, but you, you have a sense, if you understand the language, then you have that, you know that sense of what the words mean. Um, my, my dad, he's the second young, second oldest of his family, he's actually the last one left now. But he always kicks himself, why didn't I listen? My, my, my teachers are right there, his parents, his grandparents, why didn't I listen to them? Now he's trying to remember things and help. When I have questions, I go see him because he's the only one I have left. And that's who we learn off our family. I always tell my students that I'm giving you guys some information here. But I'm not your family member. You know, go to your families, get the information of your own family. Everybody has a story, everybody has a history. I give you the information, you use it now, you go find out your story, your histories. And that's where you're keeping your, your, um, your uh, family alive, the language alive. You're keeping your history alive. Um, what else is I going to talk about? All these beliefs that we have too, they're told in the stories. Me and Gweishuak, the little men. You know, we have stories about them. What did they give us? Uh, momo. Uh, honey. And what does uh, honey do for us? It's our natural sweetener. If we all use honey instead of sugar, we'd all be diabetes free. Uh, another one is, it acts as a healer. You put it on a cut or something, it seals it. It still does that today. Honey still does that. Stops the bleeding. Um, we have stories about uh, Wintago and uh, he's, a can uh, he's a cannibalistic monster and he teaches us not to be cannibals, not to be eating off people. If you look at it in the sense where you're living off somebody. You know, and today we got about a Wintago. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're evil monsters they take things from you and that's what they do is they, they eat your life away they take your life we also have stories on the um, besides Nena Bush there's Nina and Weishua. we also have historical uh, stories we have um, children's stories so all these kinds of stories that we have, they're all told in the language. And once they're taken out of that language, they kind of change a bit. They, they lose that meaning that the language gives them. So, um, and I'm very sad that I can't remember these by heart. You know, I have to read them in order to remember them. And it shouldn't be like that. And we're losing our speakers fast. So anytime I get a chance, I try and go and talk to somebody that I know and get info off them. So I'm writing a book. I don't know, just kidding. Um, <laughs> when I go around to all these camps, I go all over in the summer. I go to White Bear, uh, Satame, Kauzis, uh, Muscapeding, Pot, Labrette, Cody. I go to all these camps and they're not all solo camps, some of them are Greek, so we mix them. We, we teach both because a lot of people are a mixture of solo and Greek. So we go around telling, you know, teaching our language, teaching what we can, but it's still not enough because by the time we go back the next summer, some of them forget. So they're only taught in the summers, where it should be ongoing from that summer ongoing. But anywhere I go, I get these stories and I said, it must be the way I look. Maybe I look like, oh, she needs to be told something. But it's always, I get these elderly people, they'll come, I need to tell you something. So they share their stories with me. So I got stories from all over that way. Uh, some of them are origin stories, how they got there. 
Some of them are on their name, how they got their name. So, and, and I'm really happy that they do that, that they can trust me. And I was telling one old man in, in uh, Kauzis, he told me the history of Kauzis. Kauzis is a solo reserve, but they call themselves Cree. Their name Kauzis means is Kiwazis, which in solo means little boy or small boy. So he was telling me this story. And then uh, I told him, oh, thank you, Kush. I said, thank you. I said, thanks for telling me. I said, I heard this before, but I wanted to hear from a band member. And I, I told him, when I write a book, is it all right if I quote you? He looked at me and said, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to write a book. <laughs> I even got the story of White Bear. White Bear, too, was solo. He left the campsite area and went towards the state, and he ended up staying in White Bear. And then his brother, Kizuku, and then moved to Manitoba. And that's where Kizuku and is now. So all of these stories, they were all told in the legends, uh, in the language passed down to these people. Where it got to Kush, Kush said he couldn't speak the language, but he understood. So now he passes it on in, in English, and he says he wishes he could have kept the language too. Another one is Victor White Bear, who told me the story of White Bear and him too. He said it was all told in a language, and he comes to me once in a while bringing words to me because White Bear is a, has Cree, Nakoda, and Soto people. So they honor those three. Every summer they have a camp for the three. They have a six week camp. Two weeks Cree, two weeks Soto, two weeks Nakoda. So when Victor was when Victor gets any writings, he comes to see me. Is this Soto or Nakoda? So I try and help him out. So it's really important to get our language, to keep our language, especially the stories, and to share them. But again, the way where I come from, we have that belief we only share so much. There's a lot of things we can't share. Um, storytellers, like I said, there's certain people that can tell certain stories certain, and certain people can only tell maybe um, men's stories like Joe talked about our, or uh, Mises who's talked about our uh, societies we had women's societies, we had warrior societies and all these societies they had the language and they had their own stories so they kept them so that's why I use that title, because there's only so many stories that I'm allowed to tell. I can't just go tell stories. I can't. Maybe I'll sit with Gilbert after, get a story, and then it'll be in print after. You know, that's what we're scared of, people to do that. That's why we keep our stories to ourselves. There are stories. They're not meant for somebody to take. These ones we're meant to share because they're, they teach us lessons. They teach the kids things. Go back to our old way and start using stories to teach. We gotta get away from hitting our kids. You know that intergenerational trauma? I went through that and you know it didn't bother me that I went to day school until we started having to apply. It's when it came. You know when the stuff I went through, I can't imagine my parents going through worse than that. So, these help, these stories really help. You know, and we have all kinds of stories. Teaching stories, humorous stories, children's stories, scary stories. We have all kinds of genres of teach of stories. And they have to come back. Um, I can't remember what else I, but I think that was what I wanted to cover. Is how important our language is, especially for the stories. So once you put them into English, you're leaving out a lot. You're, you're leaving out the most important stuff. A lot of our words that can be translated into English, then you're weakening them. They weaken our words. And our words have a lot of power because they come from the Creator. The Creator gave us that. Gave us all individual, an individual language only meant for us. Um, and songs, also songs again, we have our own songs, we have songs that, and we don't share these, like, we 
we don't share them our round dance songs we they're never set sung outside of the round dance they're not shared anywhere our warrior lodge songs they're only sung there they're not shared anywhere our sun dance songs again too they're only sung there they're not sung anywhere else so even those they're all kept and they're all in the language <coughs> I find that so great that when our young boys are starting to learn to sing, they can sing in the language. But as soon as you ask them to say a word, I can't. You just say. <coughs> you should. You know, but that's so good. So maybe that's what we need to do is teach it by singing. You know, and when I went to White Bear, I taught the kids three songs and two general prayers. They learned them. Kids are smart, they pick up things, but we sang the prayers so they can learn them, and they learn them. I, this is going to be my fourth year going back out there, and they're going to sing them to me when I go out there. So that's a start, is, is whatever you can, even using a language a little bit. You know, not the swear words, <laughs> not, not the bad words. And, you know, and just using a bit of it, even greeting people with it. Like our words, another word we have, Mindamowe, which is the old lady. And English, that's what it's translated out to, old lady. But that word means the one who holds things together. And who does that in the families? The old women. Akiwezi, in English, old man. What does it mean in Zulu? Earth man, the man from the earth. Apinochiak. Apinochi. English means child. What it means is the one that was lent to us in the Creator. So that's why language is very important. It has more of a meaning than English. You know, we have all these words that we have to try to make up English for. So language is very important. Language is the lifeblood of our culture. Memanikshigo. Kinawaya Maya Lake. To me which.